You are God's creature, designed for glory. You are not designed for shame. Return it back in Jesus' name. I rebuke the devil. God is a God of mercy. When you understand that God is a God of mercy, you are a creature of intention. God created you intentionally. Get set for a moment of empowerment with your host, Benjamin Beckley. I will sing of the mercies of the Lord forever. With my mouth will I make known His faithfulness to all generations. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. It's a blessed day for you. It's a blessed moment for you. It's a day that the Lord has made full of grace, glory, and divine benefit. You will not miss out of the benefits of today in the precious name of Jesus. I welcome you to Moment of Empowerment with Benjamin Beckley, and I remain your privileged host, Benjamin Beckley, of the Empowerment Center in Arlington, Texas. God bless you so much. Now, Moment of Empowerment is a revolutionary and prophetic broadcast that is designed towards empowering you towards taking your place in destiny. It is designed to empower you to take your place. There is a place for you in life. Everyone created by God has a place on the earth. There is a place of glory for you. There is a place of shining for you. You are positioned on the earth not to be a wanderer, but to be a wonder. And you will surely fulfill the destiny that God has for you in the precious name of Jesus. Now, thank you so much for tuning in to this broadcast today. I know surely you shall be blessed of the Lord in the precious name of Jesus. I want to appreciate you for sparing your time, for sharing with your friend, for telling somebody about the broadcast. We really, really value you. The Lord bless you. And I pray that the Lord will continue to sustain you and make this broadcast to be a blessing to you. I also want to appreciate everyone that has been supporting and making a donation and all the partners you are valued in the precious name of Jesus. Now, right before we go into the word of the Lord, I would like you to tell somebody about this broadcast right now. Now, call someone, send somebody a text message that moment of empowerment is on now. Tell them the station you are watching me because God is about to send his word your way that will transform your world for better. Every time God's word comes, it comes with all the virtue that it carries. I'd like you to understand that God's word is light activator. God's word is a light activator. It activates life and it dismantles darkness. Whenever it gains access into any destiny, it enlightens the destiny and it puts an end to the operation of fear, operation of darkness in any life that it gains access into. In Psalm 119 and verse 130, Psalm 119 and verse 130, the Bible says, The entrance of thy words giveth light. The entrance. So when God's word penetrates into you, it provokes light in you. And when you are lighted, darkness cannot stand in your way. Darkness cannot stand in your life. The Bible says the light shines so much in darkness that darkness cannot comprehend. I pray that as God's word come your way today, it will shatter every traces of darkness, every walk of darkness, everything that has not allowed you to shine in the dimension in which God wants you to shine in the precious name of Jesus. Because the brighter your light, the greater your shining. The brighter the light, the greater your shining. The Bible says in Isaiah chapter 60 verse 1, Arise, shine, for thy light has come. Until your light comes, your shining will not come. Until your light comes, your shining will not be activated. And God's word is a light activator. This word will provoke your shining. It will step you up into your place of manifestation in the precious name of Jesus. Glory, glory be to God. Now, as we get ready to connect with revelation from God's word, I'd like to invite you to the Empowerment Center. I want you to come experience the power of God experience the presence of God, and experience the person of God. 
the Empowerment Center is a non-denominational, multicultural, world-based church of God. It's a loving family. We want to love you and express the love of God to you even as you are. It doesn't matter how you are. It doesn't matter who you are. You all are, you are all welcome. Everyone is welcome to the Empowerment Center. It's a place where destinies have been empowered to step into becoming who God wants them to become, enjoy what God, them, what God wants them to enjoy, and also have an impact in their generation. You are welcome to the Empowerment Center. The address is right on the screen. The uh, 838 Secretary Drive, Arlington, Texas, 76015. I want to see you come. Let's fellowship together. I'm inviting you to visit us in any of our services. Come this Sunday. Uh, our services on Sunday is 10 a.m. to 12 noon. And on Thursdays, we have a, a, an encounter with God called Empowerment Service, 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. every Thursday. I look forward to having you come around. Let's celebrate Jesus. Come and experience the power of God. Come and experience and, and have an encounter with God's word that can turn life around and empower you to become who God wants you to be. Now, in case you are just tuning in to this broadcast, this is Moment of Empowerment with Benjamin Beckley. And this broadcast is dedicated essentially to empower you towards taking your rightful place in destiny. Glory be to God. Now, today, I shall continue the teaching series that I started in the last broadcast that is entitled, The Secret of Overcomers. The Secret of Overcomers. Now, uh, this is going to be the part two. Uh, in the last broadcast, we, we discovered that life is full of trouble, life is full of challenges, Life is full of negative experiences, but that is not the end of life. That is not all that life is all about. We also discovered as part of our study that life is also a place of triumph. Life is full of success stories. Life is also a place for promotion. Life is a place for enjoying the goodness of the Lord. The Bible speaking in Psalm 33 verse 5, the Bible says the earth is full of the goodness of the Lord. So not only is life a place for trouble, not only is life a place for failure, life is also a place for success. Life is also a place where people can triumph. Life is a place where you can defeat your defeat and step into your lifting. So we saw from our study that overcomers are men and women that shifted mentally and physically from being defeated into being lifted. We saw that until you are mentally, or until you overcome mentally, you can't overcome physically. You cannot be mentally defeated and expect to physically triumph. That is one of the things we discovered. And we also discovered that overcomers are those that come over something. They overcome what comes over them. They overcome what comes against them. They come over what is stopping them from stepping into. We saw that overcomers are men and women who refuse to remain a victim. They refuse to remain a victim, but they paid a price to stand out as victors. Now, by the grace of God, in case you miss that episode, you can watch the rebroadcast on our website, uh, the www.wordrevival.org. Uh, you can watch the rebroadcast of the website. The website is on the screen right now. You can watch a rebroadcast. Once you get that, just click on Watch Empowerment TV, and you can watch a rebroadcast of all the episodes and the editions that we have done. And uh, if this is your first time of watching, you can also watch a lot of videos on there. That will be a blessing to you. Now, let's continue our scriptural exploration on the secret of overcomers as we consider some of the pivotal secrets from the story of Jabesh. Now, we were looking at the scripture from 1 Chronicles chapter 4. That was our anchor scripture, and I'm still going to be teaching from there today and with some other scriptures. 1 Chronicles chapter 4, verse 9. And verse 10. Now we want to look into the scripture 
to connect with secrets that overcomers engage to overcome. And when you know the secret of overcomers, nothing will stop you from overcoming. The reason why many have not been able to step into their place in life is because they have not connected with the secret that is necessary. When you know what you need to know, then nothing can stop you from getting what you are due to getting in life. I know by the reason of this broadcast that today the secret to your next level will be unveiled to you. Everything you need to know to get what you need in life. May God open up your understanding. May your eyes be open to it. In the name of Jesus, in the day, in the night, you are sleeping, you are walking, you are thinking, God will unveil secrets to you. Secrets for expansion. Secrets to live a better life. Secrets for promotion. Secrets for success. The Lord will unveil to you in the precious name of Jesus. Now, First Chronicles chapter 4, verse 9 and 10. The Bible says, And Jabesh was more honorable than his brethren. And his mother called his name Jabesh, saying, Because I bear him with sorrow. Verse 10. And Jabesh called on the God of Israel, saying, Oh, that thou wilt bless me indeed, and enlarge my coast and that thy hand will be with me, and that thou will keep me from evil, that it may not grieve me. And the Bible says, and God granted him that which he requested. The Lord will grant your request today in the precious name of Jesus. Now, we have discovered from the scripture that Jabesh was not responsible for his problem. But it took responsibility to experience progress. The Bible says, his mother said, I bear him with sorrow. I bear him with sorrow. So that means the mother was passing through sorrow as a person. Therefore, when she gave birth to the son, she had no other name to name him than to call him sorrow. He was not directly responsible for his predicament, but he took responsibility to experience progress. And I did say that you may not be responsible for what you are passing through, but you can take responsibility to go to where you want to get to. Don't allow what you are passing through to block your eyes from where you are going to. Now, one of the secrets of overcomers from this scripture that I want to share with you is that Overcomers refuses to accept defeat. One of the secrets of overcomers, if you will overcome in life, you must connect with the secret, is that overcomers always refuse to accept defeat. You are not defeated in life until you accept defeat. Until you accept defeat, you have not yet been defeated. Everyone that will overcome in life must refuse to accept defeat. Because when you accept defeat, is an indication that you are already defeated. Now, even though Jabesh was named Sorrow, he refused to accept that as the best that is available for his life. He knew something better, that there is a better life beyond being living a sorrowful life. So he, he, he refused to accept defeat. I want to challenge you. Don't accept defeat. Don't give up. Because you can surely overcome. Overcomers always refuse to accept that it is over. They don't agree. It is not over until you win. Now, in the scripture, there is a scriptural testimony of a woman that had the issue of blood for 12 years. The Bible says there was a woman that had issue of blood for 12 years. In Mark chapter 5, verse 25 to 29. This woman also refused to accept defeat. The Bible says she has suffered many things from the hand of many doctors. She had been to many physicians. She was looking for solution, but the Bible says it got worse. She was looking for betterment, but everything got bitter for her. She lost money. The Bible says she spent all her finances on that situation. Maybe there is somebody watching me right now that there is a particular trouble, predicament, problem, and challenge in your life that has been engulfing your finances. Only one trouble came into the life of the woman, but it took away every other thing she had. The problem took away her joy. The problem took away her finances. The problem took away 
relationship from her because nobody will want to associate with her any longer. But the Bible made us to understand the woman refused to accept that at the end of her life. She pressed forward. She pressed into until she connected with something. I'm praying for somebody today that whatever be the root curse, the major trouble in your life that has given room to some other troubles, I command all of them today to be arrested in the precious name of Jesus. Maybe you have been passing through long-term trouble like this woman had been passing through for 12 years. 12 years she was passing through the same thing. I know people who will have looked at her and said there is no way of escape for you. Maybe you are that person that you have always been hearing the voice of condemnation, the voice of failure, telling you there is nothing we can do, telling you there is no other way out. But I want to tell you a good news. There is a way out for you. Overcomers always refuse to accept defeat. Maybe you have been failing in that exam. Don't accept defeat. You are not yet defeated. You might have fallen ten times. The Bible says when a righteous falls seven times, he's going to rise up again. I speak into your life. Wherever you have fallen, wherever you have made missed it. Wherever you have made mistake, you are coming back alive. In the name of Jesus, you are rising up again. In the precious name of Jesus, you will not be defeated. That defeat you are experiencing is going to be the last forever. In the name of Jesus. So secret number one, overcomers always refuse to accept defeat. Number two secret I want to share with you from the story of Jabesh is that overcomers are solution-minded are not situation burdened. I like to say that again. Overcomers are always solution minded and not situation burdened. They focus on the solution, they don't burden their mind with the situation. I realize that when you are too burdened about the situation of life, you easily lose out of the solution. When you lose focus of solution, you will continually be burdened with situation. How did I know? I saw from the scripture that Jabesh was solution-minded because he will have accepted defeat, but he refused to accept defeat. Then the Bible says he called on the God of Israel. He was looking for solution. If he was not solution-minded, he had no reason to pray. He was solution-minded. He believed there is a way of escape. He was mentally alert, even though he was physically passing through something. I want to challenge you. Don't focus on the situation. Those that will overcome, they focus on the solution. They think about the way out. They don't think about the problem. They don't think about the challenges. They think in, they think through the challenges. They think through what they are passing through. They don't think into it. They don't allow it to burden them, but they look forward. They are conscious of the reality that there is a way of escape. Let me tell you something. Those that will overcome will focus on the solution. They don't play the blame game. Of course, Jabesh had a right to say that I'm what I am today because of what my mother has done. He has the right to say that, that there is nothing I can do about it, that is all. But no, he knew that there is a solution. So he was more conscious of the solution than the problem. He was more conscious of the solution than the situation. That is one of the things you need to understand. If you will overcome, you must be solution-minded. One, you are solution-minded, you can engage solution in the midst of the situation. Listen to me. When you focus on the problem, it becomes bigger. When you focus on the problem, it becomes bigger. It even looks more bigger than it is. But when you focus on the way out, you attract it. Looking at the same woman with the issue of blood in Mark chapter 5, from verse 25 to 29, the Bible made us to understand, look at what the Bible says, that this woman, even though she had passed through many things in the hands of many physicians, she was still solution-minded. The woman refused to allow the situation to blindfold her, thinking that everything is gone. The Bible says, and a certain woman from verse 25, Mark chapter 5, which had an issue of blood for 12 years and had suffered many things from many physicians. She has suffered many things. Many things from many physicians. She was looking for a way out. But instead of solution, the problem was getting more. I don't know who you are, but God is speaking to me. 
that you have, you have been longing out for solution. But the more you approach into solution, the more the problem becomes bigger. You have, you have tried everything. They try to help you with it. But even those that try to help you, they, they added to the problem. But God is asking me to prophesy into your life. A way of escape is coming for you. In the name of Jesus, you are coming out from that situation in the precious name of Jesus. Now look at what the woman was passing through. The Bible says she spent all she had and was nothing better. Mm. But rather, it grew worse. Verse 27. But when she heard of Jesus, she came in behind the press and touched his garment. Verse 28. That was the solution-mindedness. What made her to, to move on was the solution-mindedness she had. When you are solution-minded, you will not be discouraged. When you are solution-minded, you will always be encouraged to know that I'm not going to give up. Look at what happened in verse 28. For she said, if I may touch his cloth... I shall be whole. I shall be whole. That is the mind that is after solution. She was solution-minded that she, she had to pay her way out of the situation. She was solution-minded that he did not allow the situation to overshadow her. Listen to me. If you are not thinking solution, you cannot attract it. If you consistently think about problem, you continue to attract problem. What you are thinking about always determine what you will attract in the, in the journey of life. If you will overcome, you must be solution conscious. Be conscious of the fact that there is a way out. Be, be conscious of the reality that there is a way of escape. Don't allow the situation to burden you, but shift off your focus from the situation and start looking onto solution. And I know you will get it in the precious name of Jesus. Now, let me share with you briefly the third secret. And I'll continue from there in my next broadcast. One of the other secrets I saw about the secret of overcomers is that overcomers take action even in the midst of the situation. Overcomers take action even in the midst of the situation. Overcomers don't watch things happen. They take action to make things happen. They don't watch things happen. They take action to ensure that things happen. Overcomers are not just talkers, they are actors. They act on what they believe. They act on the persuasion that there is a way of escape. They don't sit down waiting for something to happen. They take responsibility to make things happen. Look at Jabesh. He took positive action by calling upon the God of Israel. He would have accepted it as his life because he had been in it for a while, but he took action. He did not continue to watch things happen. He did not wait looking at how what his mother had done be ruling his life. He took action. If you will overcome, you must identify the action to take and take the corresponding action. Look at the woman with the issue of blood. In Mark chapter 5, I'm sharing scripture with scripture. The Bible says she pressed her way through the mist. There was opposition. The, everything shows that it is not possible. Because even by standard, she was not supposed to touch. But she, she broke the rule. Come on now. She broke status quo. She pressed her way into a solution because she knew there is a way of escape. After 12 years, it came to an end in one day because of an action that she took. Somebody is watching me. There is an action you need to take. Until you take the action you need to take, you will not experience the manifestation you need to experience. Until you take the action that you need to take, you will not experience the manifestation that you so desire. She took action. She took action. She pressed through the midst of the people. She, she broke the status quo. And as condition changed, when you take right action, your condition must change for the better. She connected with her breakthrough. The Bible says in Mark chapter 5 and verse 27, when she heard about Jesus, she came in behind the press and touched his garment. It, she touched and every, it, there was a touch on her from ever. The Bible says immediately the, the, the predicament ceased. Immediately the issue of blood stopped. I pray for you. Every action you need to take that will take you into your place of manifestation. May God stir up that action in your heart. In the precious name of Jesus, the prodigal son overcame his predicament because he took an action to go back home. He took an action to go back to the father. Somebody is watching me. You need to take an action. Until you take action, you will not experience manifestation. Until you take action, and I mean right action, the situation may not change. God is stirring up your heart. Telling you what you need to do. 
telling you what action you need to take. You need to take an action right now. Take an action. If you have left your wife, go back to him. Go back to her. Take an action. Whatever action the Spirit of the Lord is standing up in your heart to take. Many people have been talking about what they want to do, but they have not done it. Take action right now. Go back to school. Take the action to go back to school. Take the action right now to stop what is stopping you. Take an action to change your attitude. Take that action until the woman make a move. Nothing moved in her life. Until you make a move, things may remain the same. When Jabesh saw that this is not what I want to be, this is not where I want to be, he took action by connecting with the God of heaven and everything changed for him. Somebody is watching me right now. You need to take an action. I mean, as I'm talking right now, somebody, God, is turning up your heart that you need to take an action. Like the prodigal son to come back home. You have left your father. You have left the place of prayer. You have left the place of connection. God is calling you back right now. Take action to come back to him. And I know as you take that action, you are blessed in the precious name of Jesus. Oh, glory be to God. Now, I'm going to continue this teaching series in my next broadcast on secret of overcomers. I know you shall, you have really, really been blessed. Now, by the grace of God, in my next broadcast, I'm going to share, I'm going to be sharing with you some other secret that can empower you to overcome. You shall surely overcome in the precious name of Jesus. You don't want to miss the next broadcast because I'm going to be praying with you and I'm going to be praying over situations. I know there will be a way of escape. Hallelujah. Now, I know this broadcast has been a blessing to you. I, I want to hear from you. Now, call me, write me, send me an email. Let me hear from you. Let me see how this broadcast has been a blessing to you. I want to hear your testimony. I want to hear your praise report. I know God has been good to you, and it will continue to be good to you in the precious name of Jesus. I want to thank everyone that has been partnering with us in advancing this kingdom project, and I know as we spread the good news, you shall surely not miss your reward. Now, in case you are just watching or you have not, been, you have not joined our partners, I want to encourage you to join our TV broadcast partner today. And as you join uh, in the spreading of the gospel of the kingdom, and as we empower lives. Now, the information is right on the screen. You, you can partner with us with any monthly commitment of any amount that you can afford, or you, can have, uh, you, you are able to part with, $20, $50, $100. I will mail to you a prophetic audio CD package that is entitled Designing and Defeating Satanic Strategy. The information on this on the screen, write the number, call in right now, make a, make a commitment to make a donation to be a part of our partners, and you will not miss your reward in the precious name of Jesus. Now, by the grace of God, I will continue this broadcast in my next edition, and it will be a blessing to you. Let me pray over you. In the name of Jesus, I decree right now that the hand of the Lord will come into your life. The hand of the Lord will touch you. He will heal you. Everyone sick, be healed in the name of Jesus. May the goodness of the Lord be over you. In Jesus' precious name, amen. I want to see you at the Empowerment Center this Sunday. Come, let's fellowship together. Let's celebrate Jesus, and you shall surely be blessed. You will appreciate coming. I can tell you that the information is on the screen. Call in right now. Get information. Write the number down, and I look forward to see you in any of our services. Sundays, 10 to 12. Thursdays, 7 to 9. You are blessed. Till I come your way again next week, stay empowered and keep empowering others. God bless you. Amen. Thank you for joining us. Watch us every week at the same time for your moment of empowerment. Visit us online at wordrevival.org or call us at 972-639-1762 or stop by and see us at 838 Secretary Drive, Arlington, Texas.